Hey everyone, and to all those that are new welcome. This is my Am I the Asshole Reddit channel. Where I find different Reddit stories from the subreddit r slash am I the asshole. Today, I thought I'd make a simpler compilation video instead of my usual content. So, no commentary, and no comments just straight up posts. I just want to make a disclaimer guys, I have not edited any of the posts other than the headings or the occasional curse word. The reason being is that some of these people are from foreign countries and the fact that they are writing their stories in English is worth being celebrated and encouraged. It's never easy learning another language and I would rather encourage them instead of discouraging them. Now, as per usual, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that like button, all of these would really help me out, now let's get straight into the first story. Story 1 Am I the asshole for letting my nephew go into foster care? My sister is kind of a waste of skin. I love her, but I could make money betting against any decision she makes. Our mom set up a college fund for her. She didn't bother going. She had an opportunity to buy a house 15 years ago and decided to go on a trip around the world. She got pregnant in South Africa from some guy she was working with on a yacht. She didn't bother coming home until she was five months pregnant. She stayed for four years and then left again but her son stayed with our mom. I was in school when she did this. My mom ended up having to use my college fund to help raise my nephew. I managed to get financial aid and completed my college with only about $30.000 in loans. I moved out and moved to another city. I love my mom but that kid is out of control and not my problem. My mother has recently been diagnosed with a condition that means she will very soon be unable to care for herself, much less my nephew. She called me to ask if I would be willing to accept guardianship of my nephew. I very politely said F no. No one else in the family is willing to take him either. The kid has burned a lot of bridges. At least one literally at my uncle's ranch. My mom is worried that he will end up in foster care. I am still bitter about having to go into debt because of my sister's decisions and my mom coddling her. I know the kid needs counseling and love but I just can't find it in myself to provide that. I have a pretty great life and I am not interested in throwing a wrench into the gears. I have reached out to my sister but she is in South America working. She says she is getting her life together and cannot come back right now. My mom is telling me how important family is. She says she understands why I feel like I do, but she is still disappointed with me. My sister says I'm an asshole for not helping her and her son. I think contributing my college fund against my will was enough. I could afford to take on the kid. If I get legal guardianship I could put him on my health insurance and maybe get him counseling. But I'm just not interested in turning my life upside down. Story 2. Am I the asshole for telling my cousin she is selfish? I, 21 female, lives in a different province as my cousin. My cousin let's call her, Nancy, we have known each other for almost 4 years and we have been very close I used to share everything with her every happy as well as sorrow. We had a marriage of our close relatives while ago and the marriage was happening on the province she lives in and I decided to go a while ago as we decided to wear same kind of dress and I have to buy it. I went to her province and asked her to set a location to met and discuss what to wear and buy at that time she used to talk to a guy whom I have never talked then she called me at a cafe I went there and waited for her almost an hour then she decided to show up I am very tolerant person so I didn't say anything to her and pretend that I have also just arrived. Then we go to a mall near the cafe and looked out for a dress we both tried it and liked it and decided to buy it then she suddenly get a phone call from that guy and leave without saying a. Word she told me to buy the dress and told me to wait her she will arrive there after 15 minutes as she got some work. I waited for nearly 45 minutes she didn't arrive there so I bought the dress and call a cab and went home angry and she called me after 4 hour of that incident I was at the home where marriage was happening. She called me to ask whether I had bought her the dress or not because she don't want to match it now I was so angry that I called her selfish arrogant childish and told her that I am never talking to her again and she replied saying that how I was reliable on her and never decide anything on my own and even told me how I was ungrateful to her as she take out some important time for me. 
Then I woke up the next day and decided to leave as I was feeling alone and betrayed. Then after sometimes that guy called me and told me that I was a asshole for saying she is childish, selfish and other things I want to know if I am an asshole. Story 3. Would I be the asshole if I stop watching my niece? My, 38 female, husband, Chris, 39 male, and I have a daughter Megan, 7. A few years ago Chris' younger half-sister Rachel, 27 female, started thinking seriously about moving to where we are with hey daughter Delia, 6. Rachel is from a high cost of living area so she wanted to live somewhere less expensive but also have her daughter grow up with family. Rachel is a single mom and Chris and I told her we'd love for them to move out here and we would do whatever we could to help. Rachel and Delia moved out here six months ago, they lived with us, no charge, for three months until they found their own place, we enrolled Delia in the same school as Megan, they are both in first grade. Rachel drops Delia off here each school day and we take her with Megan and pick them both up every day after school and she is with us until Rachel gets off work, usually 5.45 to 6. On the days when there is no school but R has to work, Delia is with us all day. We don't ask her to pay us anything for this. We always knew this move was going to be a big transition for them, especially Delia. They lived so far away that we never really spent that much time together before but would talk on the phone a lot. Delia has a temper, she gets mad at the drop of a hat and lashes out, screaming, crying, hitting, kicking and calling names, a lot and Megan takes the brunt of it. On Halloween Rachel was homesick so we offered to keep Delia that night so Rachel could rest and Delia could trick or treat. Delian got mad that Megan wouldn't give her a specific piece of candy, even though she had her own big bag, and slapped Megan across the face hard enough to leave a handprint on her cheek. I asked her why she would do that, she said it was an accident. We ended her night right then and made her go straight to bed and we told Rachel about it the next day. Delia was on her best behavior for a while after that but it's been getting bad again lately, only this time, she does it when she thinks no one is looking. Two weeks ago at school Delia hit Megan in the face with her jacket and the zipper caught her and cut her forehead. Megan told a teacher but Delia started screaming and crying that it was an accident. The teacher told them to play nicely. Last week on the playground, Delia swung off the monkey bars and kicked Megan really hard in the back, leaving another mark, the teachers again chalked it up to an accident because Delia was crying that it was an accident. My gut tells me these are not accidents. I want to support Rachel but she doesn't seem to take this that seriously. She thinks it's nothing more than squabbles between two little girls. I can't have my kid getting hurt anymore. Would I be the asshole if I tell Rachel she can't depend on me for childcare anymore even though it would put her in a tough financial position? Before we go into the comments, I want to say thank you for your support. If you like the video please give us a like and share your thoughts with us. If you would also be gracious enough to subscribe I try to post almost every day. Thanks for watching another one of my videos it means a lot, now let's go to the comments. Story 4. Am I the asshole for telling my dad I owe him nothing and throwing his words back at him during an argument? The gist is this. I lost my mom to a long-term health issue when I was 10. The cost of treatment drained my parents' finances and it was just dad and me after mom died. No extended family. Dad started dating when I was 12 and he met Jane. After a few months he told me her son had a form of brain cancer and was very sick and that they were getting married and he would be helping to take care of her son. We went from two in a tiny two-bedroom house to four in a tiny two-bedroom house and me sharing with a terminally ill toddler I didn't know. We had to make so many changes. No more takeout, which was a once-a-month treat before that. I had to stop my only extracurricular activity. No friends over because noise bothered him. No space that was just mine. No extra money for celebrating birthdays and Christmas. When I was 15 dad and I got into a huge argument because I was never home and was always saying no to helping Jane take care of her son. When I told him how much I hated the situation he looked me in the eye and told me to grow up. He also told me that I was old enough to understand that life wasn't always easy or fun and that a rougher life can build character. He told me we grew our family which was a good thing, and one of the consequences of that sometimes is having less, 
but that it was worth it for the extra love. I told him that was bullshit. He told me I was not his whole life and he was not going to stop doing what he wanted to do because of me. Then he told me to never, ever say anything negative around his stepson because he was a kid and didn't need to know I resented him for being sick. After that talk I was even more distant and left when I was 17, right after graduation, and couch surfed until I went to college, I graduated high school at 17 and turned 18 that October. I didn't stay in touch. When I was 19 I heard that dad's stepson had died. In college I met my wife and we got married this past June. Then in November my dad showed up and told me he wanted to talk. I shut the door in his face. He kept showing up where I was to talk. After getting annoyed with him I agreed to meet him for a coffee. He told me how he'd ended up divorced from Jane and how his stepson had died and he looked disappointed when he learned I knew. He told me how he'd been struggling a lot and how he was hoping I could help him out. I laughed in his face and told him he had some nerve. He mentioned how he'd spent a lot of money on finding me and he wanted us to repair things but he also needed my help. I told him no way. He became angry and told me he was my dad and was always there for me and I owed him. I told him I owed him nothing and I threw most of his words back in his face, including that he needed to grow up and that he was not my whole life and would not stop me doing what I want. It became a bit of a scene. He told me at my age I should have grown more compassion. Am I the asshole? Story 5 Am I the asshole, husband leaves me alone after surgery? I, female 33, had same-day surgery. I was not allowed to drive myself to two from the hospital and was to have someone with me for 24 hours following surgery. I asked my husband, male 33, to take me there and to take care of me. He agreed, which was a big reason I went ahead it. My husband runs a busy company and it is difficult for him to step away. Bit of background, we have four children together under six in our blended family, and childcare duties fall mainly to me. I also work full-time. I just recently gave birth to our son. My husband begrudgingly takes me to the hospital. Once I am settled, I said it was fine for him to leave as long as he was back when I woke up from surgery. I called him an hour or so later to let him know I was going back and they would call him when I was going into recovery before they brought me back to the room. I get out of recovery and was obviously very loopy from anesthesia. My husband wasn't there but the nanny was. I had to stay longer than I expected because I had some small complications afterwards. My husband finally got there as I was getting dressed and being put in the wheelchair to leave. He was annoyed with me for calling and texting asking where he was. He takes me home in silence. When we get back, I finally eat some chicken soup and the nanny suggests she take the kids so I can nap for a few hours. I agree and ask my husband not to go far. I woke up shortly after they leave with vomiting and needed my medicine, which is in my husband's vehicle and he's not here. I call him and it goes straight to voicemail repeatedly. I finally get a hold of him and he is working in the next county over, explaining he's going to finish up and then head home. It's a 30-minute drive and then he continues to work for a while. When he gets home, I'm crying and he's very upset with me. We argue but then the nanny brings home the baby about 5 minutes after he gets there. He explained he rearranged his whole day because of my surgery and I'm very ungrateful. I explained that I'm not even supposed to be alone and he left to go to a county over and took my medicine with him. I stay up most of the night caring for the baby alone and he left early this morning, saying not to call him if I need anything because I don't appreciate it anyways. Am I the asshole for being upset? Story 6 Am I the asshole for forgetting to lock the door a few times a month? Hi Reddit. Boy I was hoping never to have an issue to put here, but I really need some perspective on this one. I come from a family that only sometimes locked our doors, so it was never really ingrained in me to keep the door locked at all times. My wife on the other hand came from a family where the norm was to lock everything, get a camera, be suspicious of everyone coming to the door just hyper-concerned about safety in all ways. As a result, in the beginning of our relationship, I rarely locked our doors and she always did. It gave her a lot of anxiety, 
especially since we were living in a rough neighborhood at the time. Since then, I have done my best to keep up with locking the doors. We have since moved to a great apartment in a very safe neighborhood. And though I'm a forgetful person, I have been remembering I lock our door about eight to nine times out of ten. Still working on it though. Unfortunately, my wife's anxiety about our safety has just been getting worse. She says she has night terrors and can't handle worrying if the door is locked. It's awful that she feels this way and I want to help her out. I'm just struggling to see and understand why this situation is provoking such a huge emotional response. Extra info, my wife and I live in a newly developed, gated community on the third floor of our apartment building in the very back. Zero crime since we have been living here. I take out the dogs every night so I am the one locking the door. We have a new puppy that needs to go out every four hours, and it's the 4 a.m. walks where I am most likely to forget to lock the door. My wife is very upset at me and has told me she is going to buy an expensive camera and another device and leave notes everywhere for me to lock the door. Am I the asshole for causing this situation? Story 7 Am I the asshole for refusing to pay my landlord a plumbing bill? So I've been living in this rental property for about three and a half years. I have a good chunk of college debt, so since I moved in I almost never go out and cook mostly at home. A lot of the food I cook uses a lot of vegetable and olive oil and I usually use a lot of hot water and dish soap to make sure this stuff doesn't build up. About a month ago the sink starting draining extremely slow, and a week later it stopped draining entirely. I called in my landlord and told him about the issue. He called a plumbing company, but because of the holidays, they didn't come in till a week after I called. The plumbers took three hours cleaning out my kitchen drain pipes, and the bill they wrote up was around $350. Because it was through the rental company, the plumbing company charged my landlord directly. When my landlord got the bill, he demanded I paid for it. Apparently, the plumbing company told him they haven't seen a drain this bad in years, most of these uncloggings only take an hour, not three. According to my landlord, my cooking was responsible for the clogging of the drain. I refused to pay and the situation escalated from there. I am already a month behind on rent because of holiday shopping but now my leecha landlord is trying to squeeze more and more money out of me. I told him that regular maintenance is to be expected on a unit and this is nothing new. I also found out that the drainage pipes used on the sink are a quarter inch smaller than city code and that I am willing to go to court over this issue. Reddit, am I the asshole? Wow, there are some very hectic stories there guys. I would love to hear your thoughts. As you can see in my previous videos I do read the comments and reply to the ones I can. So, please share your thoughts I would love to hear them. Discussions help us grow and at times aid us in seeing different perspectives. Also, sorry for the delay in this video, it took longer than expected. Lesson learnt, sorry. Thanks again for watching another Am I the Asshole video, I appreciate you guys for hanging. Until next time friends. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button for more future videos. To be able to monetize this channel would mean a lot. And, this way I can create more videos and grow with you all. Thank you.